What you see here behind me is just an example of all the magazines that are released on a music level throughout the week and throughout the month. And the stable diet for rock fans down throughout the 70s has been the NME, the New Musical Express, that is, Melody Maker, Sounds, etc. And in Ireland, of course, Hot Press over the last 10 years or so has been keeping Ireland safe for rock and roll. Now, on the other level is the American magazines, say, for instance, like Rolling Stone or the new Rolling Stone, which is called Spin. And then back to Britain with the big high fashion magazines like The Face and Blitz. They're still all basically music magazines, but it's in between where the big revolution is happening. And in between is where the magazines cater for between, say, the ages of 10 and 17. Pop fans all, most definitely. And what you sort of get in these magazines is the type of thing like Aha. They were nothing a year ago. They've had about three hits since then. They're from a country where... Uh, hit rock band has never come from before and there are a hundred magazines out about AHA telling you what colour their hair really is to what they had for breakfast on the 14th of April last. Now the thing is, for instance, Paul Young, he's on the cover of three of these magazines here and here's a special Paul Young magazine, just Paul Young, just Paul Young glossy, Paul Young with wham, Paul Young on stage, Paul Young with silly little questions answered and these things sell really well. But the next step from what these sell is the books and the books are selling so well these days, written mostly by rock writers from music magazines, and they're so tackily put together in their own way that it's a whole new market that has never been around 10 years ago, and now it's taking over from the glossy magazines. And I think we should have a look at some of those books now. Sally, you're the book purchasing manager here at Easton's in Dublin. Now, how do you approach the whole job of trying to get rock and pop books, in that it must be very difficult to know exactly how many of which one you would want? Well, really what you have to do is think about who is terrifically popular in the charts at the moment or else who is a legendary sort of figure. So yeah. at the moment, for popular books, Aha! really would be the main one. Last year we had Duran Duran. Before that we had Culture Club. Well, the obvious question with that is then, does Duran Duran and Culture Club sell this year still? Culture Club, no, definitely not. Duran Duran still to a certain extent, but at one stage they really swept the boards yeah. and anything that was published in book form on them sold tremendously well. So therefore in the same way almost as records and pop music itself, the books are sort of similar in that, for instance, a band can last a certain amount of time, therefore its book will last a certain amount yes. of time. So what about the perennials then? I mean, I see a whole row there on David Bowie up at the, up at the top. Uh, he obviously sells very well. David Bowie is about the best, really, of the older sort of stars. There's still a tremendous interest in him, mainly because his lyrics are very intelligent. The books that come out on him are of terrifically high quality. And they're not just fan books, although yeah. you will get those too. The Doors have been, like, not around for years. I mean, certainly with Jim Morrison. Yeah. Like, he died, what, 15 years ago. So the thing is, like, there's four or five or six books there on The Doors, and every single one of them has Jim Morrison on the cover. So obviously they sell very well. They sell extremely well. It's quite remarkable the way somebody like Morrison can stay alive in the minds of the people who heard his lyrics, who heard the music. Yeah. And they're definitely better buyers than the people who just are interested in the group of the moment, mm. because they'll come back again and again. This is no more, really, than um, sort of like an upmarket fanzine in some ways. It's just like, it's just very well put together. The pictures are good. And the script is just Depeche Mode from day one to the end. Nothing big, nothing weighty. There's only, what, 48 pages in it. So if it's a question of being able to put things together quite easy like that, I don't know Irish publishers who, who can get involved in this in an easy way and make a quick kill. The Irish publishers may have the problem of population. When you're talking about a book that's published in England, you're talking about a huge population. You're talking about a book published in Ireland and it diminishes quite a lot. Even though we do have a very large population here of people who are of the age to like rock books. But you have to think about publishers' costs, about overheads, and really you'd have to have a terrifically large print run of a book yeah, to get it out at a reasonable price. This is a very important area, it's a very important subject for us, and we do tend to take out books from areas that are showing promise and do a display of them to yeah. draw attention to them. Um, it would be one of the better selling areas we have.